Seconded to accept the minutes of September 28th. If there are, is no further discussion, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, all right, Kimball Hill, possible two hour closure. So I was approached, well, it was through an email um, from a parent who had had a discussion with some other parents after Halloween last year wondering if they thought it would be possible to be able to close the road from Kimball Hill up to Sand Hill for two hours on Halloween night just for safety reasons while the kids were retreating. Um, I haven't told her yes, I haven't told her no, I told her I would bring it to you guys and I have talked to Tom um, about it to see what his thoughts were. I talked to Deputy Pero about it to see if he could make sure he can be around. Um, my biggest concern with the closure is how it's going to affect the people that are living there. It's a 5.30 to 7.30 closure time. We would have to try to notify, we don't have to legally notify everybody, but I wouldn't yeah. want to do that without notifying yeah. people. Then it, I think there would be some traffic. You'd have to let people yeah. get back to their yeah. houses, yeah. that Local kind of thing. Like, yeah, of course. Um, so there was a suggestion, Tom's concern with closing the road for two hours during that, because it's kind of a busy time, people are coming home from work, yeah, is the danger, point. coming off of Sand Hill Road, because that's where the detour would be, it's not, it's pretty, it's pretty dangerous, especially if you get a lot of traffic doing it. Um, and that's not where the police presence would be or the emergency vehicles, they'd be up here trying to um, make sure people are aware that there's kids around. Um, so Tom suggested he is going to get some signs from, I think Brad really is going to borrow some that we can program saying that trick-or-treating is going on, you know, so that they're the, the signs that light up and special event or something like that. Um, to let people know what's going on, um, and Josh will be around. Um, Tom said that he would position a couple trucks up there if we don't want to close it, you know, just to make it a little mm -hmm. bit more visible that things are going on. Or he also su suggested maybe one way instead of, you know, and do, so you would go, you would turn onto Sand Hill. You could only come down. Coming from Westminster West, West yeah. Road to Sand Hill to go yeah. around. But we'd have to stop traffic in three, you'd have to do one at Signal Pine, um, mm -hmm. Sand Hill and then Kimball Hill, this corner here. So I don't know, maybe just having more emergency vehicle presence will be enough. I mean, I've never been here during Halloween, so I don't know what it's like. Um, I hear Main Street gets a little, you know, obviously we can't close Route 5, but mm -hmm. um, I, I guess I'm just looking for some advice, what you guys think we should do, if we should just try the more presence this year and try to keep the well, I th one thing is that I think it's gotten worse in the last three years since daylight saving time was pushed back mm -hmm. into November or forward or whatever. Yeah. And so it's it's dark. It's dark. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I don't know what the moon is like then. Yeah. Um, one of the things somebody said today was a lot of times it's not just the traffic that's driving through; it's people they pull up in front of the houses, they let their kids get out, right. and yeah. then so. Exactly that causes a problem too, so it being closed would eliminate mm -hmm. some of that. I mean, I don't know, I haven't talked to the store, I don't know how they feel about it being closed. I mean, that would be taking mm -hmm. potentially I don't, business away from them. I don't know for the two hours how much business they would I would guess that, that they have a lot of business on that night. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, I don't know. I mean, it, but would they know, still you know, have it because there's people there? Busy, right. that, you know, it's, one of the busiest times of day in traffic and climate, yeah. I mean, you know, both on Route 5 and Western yeah. West Road are, you know, jammed with 
you know, there's a lot of traffic at that hour of the day. And, mm. you know, of course, the one side of the road is not a big problem because there's a sidewalk that wasn't, mm. you know, it's the other side of the road. And it's those people that drive and they pull in and let their kids get out. Yeah, yeah. maybe if you were to have you had some kind of pedestrian, you know, you know, offer parking and just say, you know, park here for Halloween. Yeah, we'll yeah. just put them in the municipal yeah. trick or treat. Oh, right. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I stick them behind the paper mill. I, mean, I know. I know. Yeah, right. Uh, it is. And then that becomes a limitation also to give it to well, I, If there was some way we could convince people to park and walk, yeah. that would be great. I don't imagine there's, a, you know, I mean, we could post it on iPutney and. Yeah. I mean, it's going to depend on the weather. Uh, yeah. It's going to depend on the weather. It's not going to rain. You know, and and it's, the you fact know, that it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Monday, will... it's a Monday, it's a work, you know, it's a work oh, it day, is. which again, yeah, of course, Monday. makes mm -hmm. the traffic that much thicker. I don't know, but somehow the, the thought of just shutting the street with this kind of short notice. We yeah. talked about this and presented it, you know, for a period of time. I think people would have, you know, perhaps have found either come up with some ideas to accommodate it or not, but to just say you know, street closed. I also, uh, I mean, that concern of people coming out on Route yes, 5 that on Halloween night. That, yeah, I that's a concern. I don't like for, that. Yeah. I mean, that was say, a big you concern. You know, this end of Sand Hill, you know, isn't great, but it's manageable, especially yeah. if nobody's coming up over. But mm -hmm. um, coming. To have well, all the traffic yeah. I've heard yeah. about. We're talking right. about it right oh, now. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm not the organizer. I saw it on social media and I said, <laughs> Well, that's what it made me think. I mean, you know, another possibility, um, both to help the general store, is to have it stopped just after their parking. So, in other yeah. words, you could still pull. The into problem it. is, is when you pull into the general store and try to pull out of there, sometimes you have to go right. that way in right. order to. In order to turn it's such a. Yeah. So we'll update you. Yeah. I told them what was asked, <laughs> yeah. and um, my concerns are closing the road without notifying, mm -hmm. you know, trying to notify everybody that this is going on. Right. Knowing that people will be coming back from work at that time because mm -hmm. it's a Monday night um, and that some traffic will have to be let through. Yeah. And then we have to organize the three spot signal. Uh, is it signal signal line? Line? Right. And then Sand Hill and the end of, so we'll have to have three Detour. people stationed, mm -hmm. you know, or something stationed <clears throat> there. So the notification in a two-week period time and organizing it is a little bit... It's also just ask, putting in a non-emergency situation, dumping traffic onto the Route 5 end of Sand Hill, mm -hmm. you know, coming out of Sand Hill onto Route 5. Mm -hmm. That's just a terrible intersection. That was the concern um, of Tom. So, I mean, one of, right, so the other things that we talked about was that we will definitely, Josh will be around, Josh Perro, the mm -hmm. deputy. Um, Tom said that he could put a truck somewhere, you know, just at the lake by Sand Hill, mm -hmm. at least letting people know when they're coming down through that something is going on. And then we're going to borrow some signs from Brattleboro that we can program to say whatever we want, mm -hmm. like, you know, trick or treating, whatever. You think we right. could borrow them we on Halloween night? Yeah, they, they have a couple extra ones they said they'd let okay. us borrow. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, we could even in in that case, you could sort of have a sign that said voluntary detour or something. You know, I mean, if I think if people knew as they were coming on Westminster Road that yeah. if they, you know, I think people just don't think about it. And then all of a sudden they're in the middle of it mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, one of the things that I heard that's an, an issue is not just the, the flow of traffic going through. It's people drive up, they pull over, mm -hmm. they let their kids out of the car. So then there's, we have a two-lane road with now a car parked on the side of the road letting their kids in and out. So that's another, um, so. What, what period of time was requested? That from 5.30 to 7.30. 5.30 I mean, that's normally when we're when I come here and we're gone by seven because yeah. you know it just my kids are tiny um but I feel like yes there's you know that's one of the high points of traffic in town but relatively speaking it's not the worst you know uh traffic I think that um I just feel like for me 
even when I didn't have kids, if a road was closed like that at Halloween, I, I might be a little inconvenienced, but I'd kind of be like, expect it. Like, oh, okay, whatever, I'll go around. And I feel like it makes a big statement in our town of supporting families mm -hmm. and really being a destination. One of the things I really miss about Christmas here, we have the pancake thing, but when the port or whatever, the front porch cafe did that thing and a tree lighting and all that, it gave a real sense of community that I think this type of event could do, you know? And um, so I completely hear all the things that you're saying and the inconveniences and the difficulty with how do you get people to know where to go. But um, for the most part, the people that are gonna be inconvenienced are gonna know the alternative yeah, anyway. Yeah, 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 no. Yeah, I don't um, think it's, it's the... To me, it's more about the danger of dumping more traffic Onto Route 5. Forcing people onto Route 5 exactly. without having, I mean, if we could have traffic control up there, which maybe Tom can well, do. Well, he he, he's willing to do whatever we, I mean, he was fine. He was like, just try to sort it out. But if they get a call. Right. Then they're gone. Oh, then they're gone. gone. Right. You know, yeah. so that was a concern of his. You know, if I've got, because we've got Josh and he'll be in one section. Right. But if you've got, if we're only using... Right. You know, I mean, I but said, if have I mean, I said, I'll yeah, stand there. I mean, well, <laughs> Brian's truck has lights. Yeah. <laughs> I can sit in a but truck. But if there's, yeah, yeah, you know, Henry might be willing to. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's doable. I think that, I think we have to just be mindful of making sure that people that are living there and have businesses no. there <laughs> know. Yeah. And I think that's my... The other thing that Tom suggested, which I don't know if you were here when I said it, was doing, so that people weren't being dumped out onto Route 5 from Sand Hill, mm -hmm. was doing a one-way for, for those. Yeah, like close one, just having it be so, one lane going So one people could come yeah. down, yeah. but not go up. Or vice versa. Yeah. Well, no. because we don't want them... We don't want them going up and around to Sand Hill because that's we don't want them coming off of Sand Hill. On to route on to Route Five. Yeah. I see. That's the problem. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's this bad, it's the Route yeah. Five end of Sand Hill that's a problem. Yeah. I you know, and maybe that's a good compromise in the sense that this is kind of all of this is about traffic, but ultimately, and, and I'm kind of disappointed to not see whoever the heck was the organizer of this here. Because, well, she emailed me and told me that she had had a conflict. Okay. And so... Because I think there's an, an added element that has nothing to do with traffic that has to do with the houses, you know, are going to be given out candy and right. all the, like all those logistical things that don't have anything to do with you, mm -hmm. but the organizers of this need to get on. And if that doesn't go well, if those if those houses are like... Ah, oh, I'm done. Things. I don't yeah. want this. Yeah. yeah. Then what's the point? I mean, yeah. all I ever do is go to, like, the businesses. You know, that's I don't hit houses. Well, and this that, would this would open up that whole area to right. houses. Right. And so if if so maybe doing half the road like having it be well, it I have think, to be strategic which yeah. half, but. Well, I don't think it's half the road. I think it's just letting people, it would be, well, yeah, it would be half the road, obviously. It would be half the road that's closed. It'd be half the road that's closed. Yeah. It would be traffic, I mean, the practical way to do it would be to let, to allow traffic to come down, right. but not to go up. Because right. going up is not really a traffic danger. Yeah. Coming down, again, pushing that traffic out on yeah. Route 5 is where it's a problem. Well, the, the other thing is having people come down, they're on the side where the sidewalk is. So there's kids are on the sidewalk. Traffic is coming yeah. down. It's yeah. the side. It's the non-sidewalk side that, mm -hmm. as far as, and I get what you're saying about community and trying to, because I think that's important too, but you're right. We do need to make sure that the people, I mean, yeah. that the community, the is, community interested in doing it. is interested in yeah. that section, yeah. you know, yeah. and Cause because like, I know for a while there were houses in Westminster that started to just, they packed their stuff yeah. up and yeah. that yeah. night. Yeah. That's what people And, did. you know, because that's just, that's yeah. where people came. They yeah. knew was that there was police really presence. There was, like yeah. As well. No, my, my situation, step-parents are yeah. 
or my in-laws are right on the on yeah. Route 5 there. And, you know, it becomes, it's great. They love it, but... Some people don't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they'll get, you know, two, three hundred kids. Yeah. In, in, on what about... Area, you know, I, this might be a crack. crazy idea, but um, if you're doing one-lane traffic, what about uh, if you can find um, people to staff it, doing, like, a construction thing where you stop... Like let you let you know stop and slow signs yeah. where you let people up. It's a long run. Is right. the problem? Then you're backing up. You know, to to, yeah. to go that right. far. Right. It's there. a long way. So you'd be slowing down. You know, the other thing that we would probably have to get a state permit to do is to stop traffic on Route Five. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think that's realistic. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. So. Um, yeah. I mean, the, I mean, I think having the one way would force that would, people to park somewhere. That would help because they'd be like, "Oh, oh we can't." can't. Yeah, so but we're just going to park and somewhere. Then, like, of course, it's not going to cause a huge. Well, maybe yeah. you know, maybe we could talk to. I don't know what Halloween night is like for Greg, but maybe we could talk yeah. to Greg and see whether we could have signs saying. Mm -hmm. You know, free parking at best. And I'm, I'm not saying this is going to happen. Right. I'm mm -hmm. suggesting we could ask. Um, you know, he is, might be willing to do that. parking at the school as well. I guess one you thing know, that. A lot of people do that. Yeah. I mean, that's, and then walk down. Walk yeah. Down. Oh, I mean, and that, part of me I kind mean, of felt like, well, if you're going to choose. Direct the pedestrian route as well. If you're going to choose a section of town where you're. which you're shutting, what if. Conceptually, it all just shifted closer to the school. You know, like what if it went west of Signal Pine, you know, and just moved that way? And then it's more feasible to have even two way traffic on one, one lane. I don't, I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I. The, well, the, the one problem I see with that is that several of the houses along there are unoccupied and were occupied mm -hmm. by elderly people so yeah. I think that would be sort of an unfair burden on yeah. them um, I mean I I think your point about finding out from the people whose mm -hmm. homes would be affected whether they have an interest in it mm -hmm. you know I mean it may be I I think it's a great idea overall it may be that it's something we would need to start thinking about earlier in the season before. I mean, you know, I don't know. Maybe yeah, somebody's willing. To, I, you know, we can't we can't invest a huge amount of time and energy into it just because mm -hmm. it's sort of late and it would need to be a volunteer effort and we can't really do that. But um, I think it would be a great thing to organize. But you have to have some organizers. Yeah, I mean, and it's one thing to close something as a town when we're doing something that doesn't... But we're now anything. talking about, and people come to your door anyways on Halloween, whether we close the road or not. Right. But, but I don't know. I would like to... If we're going to do something, I think I would like to do a smaller version, maybe the one-way traffic this year, and see... Mm -hmm how that helps because so for right now let's make it the safety issue that was brought to us which i think is is, is, is real is, right yeah. and then do we have a bigger conversation for about it being, being going of forward a, a and having party. It more yeah. of a community mm -hmm. no and like i can easily imagine i don't know whether they do anything or not but i can easily imagine next stage doing something on halloween mm -hmm. night you know yeah. um, whether it's a whether it's a haunted house type thing or just yeah. a, you know, whatever it would be. Yeah. But again, with two weeks out, that's yeah, not to that's ask not anybody to do, no. you know. That's true. Santa Claus still do stuff. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think that, that, that. that. But I, you know, I think that whatever decision you make um, for this year, I, I think that, um, to me, it, it seemed like a great plan. And I, I, I get what the side, the you know, the bad things would be for the people in downtown and the businesses and the things it would affect them. But I still feel like, to me, the pros outweigh the cons. I agree, but without discussing that with with them yeah. and making them feel like a part of the conversation, then it's forced and that their that their concerns are heard and made sure that we have because I think we can address all of it. Yeah, I don't think that. 
I think that it's an hour and a half or two hours. We're not talking yeah, like not closing it for eight hours a night or during. Yeah. But I don't think that we should make the, I feel like I don't want to make the decision for the people that live there that we think it's more important than what their concerns are. That would are. be, that would be. And my that's concern. my biggest concern yeah. is just making sure that I have time to hear what their concerns right. are so we can address them. Right. You know, is the, is one person on Monday nights, do they get home from work at six o'clock and they've been working all, I want to make sure so we'll let you through. I mean, yeah. you know, that kind of stuff. Right. And it just takes organization. I don't think it's, it's clearly not impossible. I think right. it's just going to take No, right. No, but it does definitely affect people, too. I mean, like, yeah. up in, you know, that the whole concept of up in Westminster, you know, people's lawns get trashed and, you know, mm -hmm. bushes get trudged over by a bunch of kids. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't, I, I don't, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I think it would be great, but I think that, you know, sort of um, just making it, opening up people's homes to, well, I mean, I think no, they're, like tricky. Cynthia just... said, their homes are already being, you know, they, they live in town, you get hit by trick-or-treaters. I think that um, making it making it a big deal, of, uh, like inviting, saying to people, hey, it's closed. It's wide open, right, it, it, exactly. It makes it, it's a um, whole different thing. Yeah, it I is think. a whole different thing. Yeah. But I think that, um, to me, I, I don't have, my sympathy is not really in, oh gosh, we don't want to tax the people because it's you're already you live in town you shutter shutter your building if you don't want any people to come that's that's completely okay you don't have a light on nobody comes but you know being the parent of a small children is completely different than being the parent of teenagers you know like your kids oh but i remember it well i mean yeah. I totally... but, but but i think that you have yeah. to be prepared for the whole gamut and so that i i yeah. get that you know yeah. like you have to, the, there is the people who are gonna be just dropping their kids and then right. not being around to supervise at all. And I'm not in that category, so I don't, my brain doesn't go there. But I certainly think it's something to work towards. If it does, if there's, whether or not it's a signal road or nothing's done this year, I would hope that we, you know, are able to figure out how to make those steps of asking the people in this stretch yeah. and seeing what they think. And also not, you know, if there is kickback, not completely dropping it, but trying to work on it, you know. Yeah, that's what I said. Well, what I, I would that... say, though, Ruby, I mean, I, I agree with you mm -hmm. 100%, but I don't think that's something we can ask Cynthia to do, because that's no, no, no. not, you know, if, but if, if yeah. people want to, mm -hmm. you know, if, I don't know who proposed this, I don't know who the organizers per se are, but if people want to get organized and, you know, and do I'll whatever support, needs to be done. I mean, I will, That's great. I don't think that but, it's her job either. No, I will no. be the but support I, of organizing, helping with emergency people, right. and, right. and I'll yeah, do yeah. what I can. Oh, I don't, but, you know, but I, yeah, you're right. You, but can't, go, you can't go out door to door checking with people, and, and, but and I don't, we don't need to do I that. I don't think I don't that know. we do. I mean, yeah. I think that it's a matter of, you know, maybe, it, and the reason I point to you is like, it might be that you know the business people, or you know of an association of business right. people that the organizer of this can go to, yeah. or, it, you know, if it really, if you really feel like it's important enough, maybe it's something that is brought up at town meeting, and yeah. it's just, you know, I really, I personally think it's important to ask the people yeah. that live there how they feel about it. I do too. I, I don't think that it's a decision that we should make just, I don't think that's fair. If it, if if all of a sudden you know the town came down yeah. in my neck of the woods and said a lot of people come out here and we've been asked by somebody to close right. the road, I would be like, well, yes. If you asked me, maybe I would, but I it might. I would feel like I wasn't included in the conversation. And and I think that you know from my experience in Westminster, having done this for many years with yeah. small kids, right? Um, you know, the difference between you live on Main Street and. 22 groups of trick-or-treaters come to your house right. and literally a yeah. hundred groups of trick-or-treaters come to your house. I yeah. mean, you know, my in-laws buy right. 12 bags of candy right. so they have enough to get through the night. It's a huge difference. Well, I mean, I think, and maybe, I don't, I really don't know the person who organized it, but I can reach out to her on social media, but... Um, it's not like other towns haven't done this. No. Yeah. You know, Brattleboro yeah. has, a, you know, they, I don't know if they still do, but they closed a road. It wasn't a primary road, but they closed it. And I mean, that's so I think there's a certain things. amount of, um, there must be some way to reach out to the residents to yeah, see what I they agree. think. 
I don't know what the way is. And so, you know, and I, I would imagine that the people who organized it won't know what, like, beyond knocking on doors, which seems weird because there's apartment buildings and you can't, it just, you know, maybe, maybe something in everybody's mailbox. I don't know, like yeah. some way like that. And then, you know, assuring people that there would be some collection for, for candy, you know, like some way in which the people that go from 22 families to 100 in terms of trick-or-treaters that come to their door, that um, the people who organize it would help yeah. in that regard is a big deal. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've never, I don't know how that would work. Yeah. I mean, I know, I know that people look in their surrounding communities to find the safest place to bring their right. kids. So. Right. It will end up if if it's something I love Halloween. I'd stand there all night long and give out candy. I it's just right. but I get you know you go up on Kissel Hill up in Bell's Falls and those poor people. Yeah, <laughs> inundated. Yeah, Truly, it's, because it's a safe yeah. place for yeah. kids to go mm-hmm. and no, go no. door to door. So yeah. I, like I said, I don't want this to sound like a, it's not impossible. Two weeks before Halloween yeah. seems a little bit. Um, I, like, unless we've got somebody that you know, really I mean, wants I mean, to another, another option, you know, go out. We look at, I mean, Halloween this year is on a Monday, you know, so yeah. instead we have hold it on a on a Sunday, you know, Sunday, and you know, hours between the hours of three mm-hmm. thirty and five, which is you know really works out for people with small kids, which mm-hmm. is really the biggest mm-hmm. sort of concern, mm-hmm. safety wise. Mm-hmm. And just so, I, I know, I know, I, I know. And, 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 well, there, yes, there, yes, there, yes, yes. I do, but well, when right. I have little kids, I don't want to do more than one. Monday, in the world of Monday <laughs> holidays, <laughs> well, there, I mean, right? I know. I, I, there is some, well, there's something that let's happens. Let's make it a holiday. Pierce Hall on, I don't know, I never know when it is until right before Halloween, but there, there is some community event held in Pierce Hall, which, uh, so kid, so fam, young families, and it's for young families, yeah. they have something like that, and it's on a weekend. Yeah, sure. yeah I, I completely see what you mean, and I, but I do think that um, regardless, people are going to come out on Halloween anyway, yeah. I agree. so yeah. Yeah. there's yeah. that issue. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, right. you know, I think just the conversation itself is, is good to have, and, you know, maybe, it, maybe you're right, maybe it's, it's just too mm-hmm. ambitious. It, you know, for this year, and uh, and that's just what it is. But yeah. I think we can do a modified version of it. Some variation. I mean, at a minimum, I'd say, you know, as as Cynthia pointed out, an increased presence, presence of yeah. emergency personnel. Not right. not so much to oversee emergencies as much as to just, just to be, be minimize be traffic, yeah. slow things yeah. down, Visible so on and so forth. Which that's what I know made a difference right. in Westminster Absolutely. in years that you yes. did not have a yep. police officer stationed at one end or the other. Which is what they was do. Was the year that I was like, oh my God, somebody is going to... People are going yeah. through town. And but when they did, now. people were coming up over right. the hill, they saw it, they slowed they down. Had their they, blue were lights, like, they have blue lights on at yeah. both ends of the village yeah. section of so town. So that... Yeah. slows everybody right down, makes a huge difference. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, I think we could probably do that. I mean, we could talk to... Well, Josh is going to be down here. Right. So he'll be at this end. And then, and then um, Tom said that he could get somebody down by the Sand Hill end. Right. Um, and we might have something in between. Just, yeah. even if it's a truck with, I mean, one thing I don't like is a lot of lights because then it kind of takes away. No, from the, but. Oh, it's not, I mean, it's not dark until 7 anyway. Yeah. Really. It's spooky lights. Yeah. <laughs> I like it to be a little Um But even having the signs like, that when you come on to from putting Barbara, some cones out and something doing, that you know, just right, because right. from what I understand it's, last year there wasn't even the person I talked to said they don't even remember a cop being around no no I've never seen one yeah so yeah. that might be I mean we can Where try, we start we can start there or we can try the one way mm-hmm. traffic thing too that might force people to park. Which would be a good Which thing. Which would help a little bit, too, because yeah. I think some Absolutely. of the traffic is the people just driving up and dropping their kids Yeah, which is the question. It shouldn't really, really happen them. anyway. Yeah. I mean, you know, my feeling would be you should park somewhere. And, you know, I mean, of course there are exceptions for whatever the reasons might be. Mm-hmm. But as a rule, you know, park somebody else, some, somewhere else, get out and walk. Mm-hmm. But again, since we don't municipal lot that's hard to say mm-hmm. i don't know you got any comments on that pip where's the municipal lot gonna go <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> okay. 
Okay. Um, okay. Well, well, I will reach out to. I can't remember her name I, now. I don't even know. Um, she, that emailed me and let her know what we talked about, and that we'll do a variation of it this year, and then see, mm -hmm. you know, if, if we think what worked this year is fine, then we'll keep doing that. If not, we'll try to plan further in advance and let people know, and maybe have a conversation at town meeting. Of we'd like to make sure that, you know, yeah, the young. Or even a planning event, you know, whether yeah. it's town meeting or not. But, you know, again, get next stage involved. You know, maybe we could get people up at the school. I think parking at the school and walking down would be great. I mean, that yeah. also makes it sort of exercise. You know, that's yeah. for people with really small kids, that's a long way. But, yeah. you know, the school does walk to school things with the, even the teen Do kids. they do mm -hmm. anything at the school on Halloween? I don't think they do, yes. but yeah. that's See, what I'm thinking. we used to do that, is. too, is we well, would end up at the wondering. school and do, like, Right, you could have sort of a party or something up, yeah. up or there. Or next stage would be fine, too. So yeah. then it brings people into town. And next stage, I would guess, would be yeah. happy yeah. to do that. But. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't, I really don't know the person I'll reach out to her, but um, it seems like there, there's a lot of potential. It's just a matter of, you know, figuring out. Yeah. Because I, ser I think you're right. A certain amount of it is has to do with you, and a certain amount of it is like, you know, parents garnering their kind of energy and doing something. Yeah. Might not be I mean, we may find out that whoever we talk to, they're like, it's an hour and a half, who cares? We well, may I mean, that one, one of the too. reasons I, I came is that I am not a social media person at all, in, remotely, but I follow it, certain things, because I'm, I use it for business. But I feel like uh, the person who organized it, when she reached out on I, one of the, the Facebook sites, uh -huh. got some bullying by town people who were like, you know, stay home and just really nasty things about where you're not welcome to do this. This is a bad plan. Yeah. And it's one thing to say, this is a bad plan. I don't think that's a good idea. I live in town. I don't want this. Yeah. That's one thing. But the negativity that I heard was happening, to me, that is not okay. Mm -hmm. As someone who has a family in this town, and I know that's not the majority feeling, but I would just want to be yeah, sure yeah, that if we're reaching out, that there is some civility in the way that we talk about this. It can, it can, you know, Halloween is tough for some. Some people yeah, hate Halloween. I know. And yeah. it's, you know, it can get very heated very quickly, and it's dumb because it's all about some kid getting candy because they're dressed up like a ghost. I mean, let them <laughs> get the candy. <laughs> so anyway, so that's why I came. I felt like it was important because I do feel like even if it's not possible in the way that they would like, I still think it's worth the conversation. I think it's worth, yeah, you know, exploring. I agree. Yeah. Well, that's no, why I say we nice need to reach, to because you don't want it to reach mm -hmm. that level, right. but the way that it reaches that level is if you don't include exactly. everybody yeah. that's affected that's in the concern. conversation. I, I and that. the people that their section of their road is going to be closed for two yeah. hours mm -hmm. and have to give out candy right. are extremely affected by right. it. Right. And while I would appreciate it as a parent of a young child, that doesn't mean right. that... Everyone, Everyone is going to, and they have that right to not feel that way. I, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't agree. Of course, social media people just... Oh, no. I, I know. know. It's horrible. It's just yeah. yeah. That's so, when you hit delete. Maybe, yeah. we, maybe we should uh, encourage people, given the national tenor surrounding it, maybe we should encourage people not to wear clown suits this year. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, in Guilford, in that maze, they've got a bunch of them running around. Oh, do they? You run yeah, a clown uh, tent. Hamilton oh, costume. I didn't everybody. go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Unbelievable. So, I think we'll do a modified version. Whatever that ends up being, I'm yeah. not 100% we'll, sure, but... Yeah. Um, and if if you get feedback from people who have specific suggestions right. or uh, or have a willingness to participate in a way that you think could be helpful right. or encourage them to be helpful, however, I'm not trying to right. put, put you, in, you in the organizer <laughs> position, but um, you know that's uh, you know I mean I think we're happy to sort of entertain. Yeah. doing what we can, yeah. but I think that it's sort of at this late date, it's limited in what we yeah. can realistically try right. to do from our action. Cool. All right, I gotta go. Okay. Nice All to right. see you. See you. Nice to see you guys. Bye. Bye. All right. There's a resolution. If it isn't able to be considered because it wasn't warned, then um, I got plenty of time if you do it on the 23rd. I think though. it would probably be better. Good, because I just need to get the, the grant application in on the 
30th, yeah. end of the month. Okay. It's uh, for a municipal planning grant. I'm sorry, I'm, the boss is waiting for me. It's probably yeah, it's um, yeah. yeah. It's not going to cost you any money. It will assist the planning commission in preparing uh, regs for the river corridor and um, uh, special flood hazard areas. Yeah. So, so there's a resolution that needs to be done, but it was not warned, and because uh, you guys have to right. vote on it, I would rather if we wait till next so time. That doesn't mess you up. It, it doesn't mess you up. Grant application. I need your resolution, but it, it doesn't have to be submitted until the end of the month. Okay. So you so can do thank it you. properly yeah. next time. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sounds good. Thanks, Beth. Yeah. All right, so traffic study, is he coming He's in? He's not. Or? He stopped today. He has one little piece of it left to do. Okay. Um, this is the first traffic study that he's done, so there was... I'm putting the pieces together. Apparently, it's Trafice study, is how I spelled it. Trafice. <laughs> so he'll be at the trafice. next meeting. Uh, all right, Southeastern Vermont Watershed Alliance, that was... Is that what Pip was talking no, about? He's, no, that's nothing that he was talking about. It was even on the agenda. <laughs> Um, so in your packet, there was a letter that we received from Southeastern Vermont Watershed Alliance, and they are looking for, um, they're requesting $650, and I, I haven't quite caught up with them yet to, I think they're asking for it now, even though they're saying your budget, I, I think they're asking for the money now, um, not for the next budget season, but they would like to continue having it put in the budget. And basically what they've been doing is they have been doing testing, um, including sites within Putney, and they take test samples and test nitrogen and phosphorus levels, um, E. coli levels, and then they report on it. So one of the things that I was concerned about was are they duplicating efforts that the state That's is already That's what doing? I was just wondering, yeah. So I called Marie Caduto, she works for the um, Agency of Natural Resource, and she said that the state works closely with their watershed um, alliances around the state, including this one. They only test once every five years, the state does. So, um, and this organization has been testing every other week all summer long. So I asked her, I said, I don't understand why all of a sudden we're getting this. Is this something new? And she said um, that it's fairly new to Putney. They haven't the, always the been. The testing is Yeah, so that's new why now they're asking us for um, asking us for money. Um, so there, there was some talk about adding Sackett's Brook. We do, did have, have some high levels of, I can't remember exactly what it was, E. coli maybe. There were some areas they wanted tested. She, Marie Caduto from the state, was encouraging us to support them. I am not sure that we want to support them right now. It's not in our budget. I did not know that they were doing this testing. I know they've been working with the Conservation Commission and Ann Carey a little bit, um, but that I didn't know that this was going to be a request. Yeah, no, but, I would think that it would be something that, well, it's only 650 bucks, but that we would put in next year's budget and have a discussion about it. Okay. Right. That's kind of how I felt about it, but I wanted to be sure. I guess who asked them originally to do some testing was the Putney Rowing Club. There were some questions of levels. Um, in, the, in the Connecticut, in the, yeah. presumably. Um, Does New Hampshire do studies too? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, asking us, it's just asking us to include in our 2017 budget. Well, that's, so. our, that's this budget we're in. That's why I was confused. That's why I'm waiting for an answer. If they mean... So, okay. So, well, yeah, it could be 17, 18, not 16, yeah. 17. But I, yeah. I think it's now because Ann Perry came in and asked me if we had any money now that we, we thought we could contribute, that they were asking for this. And so I think it's now that they're looking for some... But maybe not. I mean, I've got to get in touch with them. But um, <clears throat> I just wanted to run it by you guys to let you know that's what I was going to tell them, is that we can talk about it for town meeting. Right. And put it in the budget, possibly, for and if they're, the next And if they're year. asking for something previous to that, I think they have to present us with a little bit. Uh, well, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you can look at their reports. They're on their website. So if you go to their website, um, 
all of their sampling are on there and what they got for um, test results. Yeah. So they're testing, they're not testing the Connecticut, they're testing the right. right. yeah. 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 tributaries. So, yes. yeah. so if it came to, if it, the request came from the rowing club, they're on the Connecticut, or were they requesting that? Well, because they were well, wondering where the levels were coming levels from. Yeah, arise. and it's in—I mean, it's in our best interest to really mm -hmm. kind of figure out where it's coming from, because a lot of times treatment right. plants get right. get well, accused of being the. Right. But we have stringent guidelines that we have to follow. Right. What we can put in, and we have tests mm -hmm. that we do all the time. So, um, we're—I'm assuming that it's not coming from. I'm sure it contributes a little mm -hmm. bit, but there's some other factors that are going into it that we probably should be more aware of. Yeah. Do we aware. test what enters at the Connecticut? There are testing. There are certain times that we test. Okay. We don't test. I don't know how often we have to okay. read the discharge mm -hmm. permit, but and and we are having to test for phosphorus and, and keep our levels. Right. That that was part mm -hmm. of the new discharge permit. So, um, I will confirm that they mean to put it in the budget for this upcoming fiscal year mm -hmm. um yeah which i i would say we're happy to i think it's great present it and mm -hmm. yeah okay. you know if the voters vote yeah. it down the voters vote it down right. but um, but at this point right now we don't have the funds available i suppose we could scrape up 650 if they are really insisting on it but i don't think they could insist on it it's something they've been doing for right no, and it's it's late in the year to. Yeah. Well, I was going to say, I think all year long. I mean, I can imagine the testing is as important during at least not well, summer, cultural yeah. periods and times like that. There are some things that she suggested. Um, if Anne's been trained in some of the pulling of samples, and they'd like to see some samples done through the wetlands to see if there's anything. Um, so she was wondering if maybe Joe could test those. So, all right, so that's nothing we really need to take action on. No. Okay. Um, E.J. Prescott, both for new meter reader and software. So a couple of years ago, we put $10,000 in the water budget to um, purchase new uh, meter readers for water, hand, a handheld device, and then the software that goes along with it. Um, <clears throat> we The 10,000 was a little low. The, we've had a hard time getting an estimate from them. It's taken quite a while to get an estimate. So <clears throat> the estimate that we got from them this past week was 12,175. 12, so we had 10 in the budget. We do have money sitting you know, as surplus in that water fund. So this would certainly not put us but under if we order it and get it done, and we need it. I mean, we're right now, we're mm -hmm. doing a lot of manual reads and... We have one now already, though, don't we? We do, but it doesn't work with the new computers. The software doesn't oh, work with the new computer right, system, right. and then mm -hmm. the meter's not reading right, and the battery's dead, and they can't recharge the battery or buy a new one because it's so old, so there's this whole... It has no resale value? No. <laughs> Um, and I will sell it to you. Do you want our it? Capital plan? <laughs> uh, should we be Should we be trying to get a quote from anybody oh, we else? Can't find anybody else? Really? Okay. Yeah, and they're the ones that have the software that interfaces yeah, with Nimric. Uh, so, like I said, it's been a long time for us to even get this quote, and um, we work pretty closely with EJ Prescott on a lot of other things. But like I said, the software. If we have the software running properly, we'll integrate with Nimric. So. And then it'll be make yeah. your job a lot easier. Well, Loris, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I just wanted approval. So do you need? Yeah, I would like to have something. So do we need a capitalization? We will. Yeah, this, right? Yeah. This over 5000 Yeah, we will. Is it worth trying to bargain with them? Just say. Love to do this, but no, they budgetary don't get constraints. Not. Okay, no, okay. So a reasonable <laughs> question. <laughs> it's very reasonable. Um, okay, one of you guys want to move to make this expenditure? Yeah, I can move that. 
the author is it again? We authorize the purchase of a, do we need the specifics? No. Okay. Of the equipment necessary to update our meter reading capability. The cost of $12,175. Need a reading in software. Been moved and seconded to approve purchase of a new meter reader and software associated with it. Uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Telephone contract. Oh, you're just full of fun things tonight. Huh? This is a good one. <laughs> so, right, currently we're paying $24.99 per line. Um, and How many so, lines are there? Uh, eleven, I think. Um, and I asked because I started working on the budget. I asked if they could do anything better with the phone lines. Yeah. We can get a three-year contract, seventeen fifty per line. Um, which normally, if they told me a price, I would just get a go oh, okay. But it is presumably that's year. per line per month. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Because it's a three-year contract, I wanted to make sure I brought it to you guys. It's a commitment for three years. I don't have a problem with it. I'm sure we're going to be with Fairpoint for. We've had good luck with them. They, you know, but. Um, in case you guys wanted me to try to do something different, or if you're okay with me signing a three-year. Seventeen dollar fifty cent per line contract with them. Twenty-five, so it essentially saves us seven fifty. Per month per line. Yeah, I, want to say, say 11, I want to say 11. So 75 80 bucks. bucks a month. Yeah, it might even be 15, but I can't. Does it include like the highway department yes. and the library? Yeah, and, and the fire department else? and everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, you know, seems silly not to, but I unless agree. unless we think there's a better deal out there from somebody who's equally as reliable. I don't see reliable. anything on the horizon. That's why, I mean, who knows what. Might right. happen in a year and a half or two years, but three years goes by pretty fast. And yeah. seventeen fifty a line is pretty. When we first started with them a couple of years ago, when we changed some things over, it was like eleven ninety nine per line. That was like an initial starter price. So it's not too bad. I mean, it's, I think it's, pretty it's roughly a thousand dollars a year savings. Which yeah, is pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, sounds like a wise choice to me. So you want a motion to approve a new telephone contract? Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to update our telephone contract with Fairpoint Communications, raising our rate to seventeen fifty per line per month. And if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. 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 That covers our water testing. Yeah, you just, you go. just yeah. like at my house, I get rid of one bill and I can replace yeah, it with another one. Yeah, another one. <laughs> Funny, I tend not to get rid of one. I just get more. <laughs> All right, IRS and State of Vermont Tax Department notices. So I was asked by the auditor when he was here to go to the IRS office and get an update of. Um, the IRS, outstanding IRS issues that we had. Um, at that time, one of the big ones was the $46,000 well, $6, penalty notice that we had that has since been abated, so that bill is no longer um, due, which was good news. But um, he had written it up in the audit last year, so he wanted me to follow up. So I um, went to the IRS office a couple weeks ago, I guess it was Friday, maybe a week ago, um, and some of the things that I had had, IRS had had as an issue back when I checked with them back a year ago, um, those issues were still outstanding. Um, one of them was a, one of the problems was some missing 941s, which are the quarterly reconciliation that reports that are done for payroll. They're due um, every quarter. Some of those were missing, and we had an outstanding um, penalty notice from the IRS for $690, I think it was, for a late deposit of some payroll tax withholdings. 
Um, there's another penalty notice of $3,400. That's for the 2011 W-2s. There's something that's not reconciled properly that needs to be addressed. Um, I came back. I went to look for some of that stuff in Anita's office and found that the, re the payroll withholdings for the Vermont had not been paid for the last quarter. The checks were still in there. So I took everything into my office and I worked on some of it. The payroll withholdings for the state of Vermont have been remitted now. I've done that and I've done the missing reports for the state of Vermont. Um, there was an $1,800 notice in there that we owed the state $1,800, but I think with filing the things that I filed, um, I think that that will clear itself up. Yeah. Um, the 941s, um, I found one of them that's missing. I asked Anita today if she had found the other ones and she has not found them yet. So tomorrow I'm going to recreate those and I'm gonna run them to the IRS office, so those will be done. The other issues are a little bit more complicated to try to figure out. I've gotta find W-2s from 2014 and 2011 and all the reports that go with it. So I just wanted to let you guys know this was going on. Have it documented that this is going on. I've had a discussion with Anita about it. Um, and Basically, what I think I'm going to do is, in my office, we're keeping track of the dates things are due. Um, the 941s, I've asked Anita if I could please sign them so I know that they go out. Um, if I don't get them, then I'm going to do them and sign them myself because one of the things I, I called uh, the LCT and I let them know what was going on and asked them for some advice, some advice and they said that when you have tasks that are done by the treasurer, if you ask to take them over because they're not being done um, and they don't get turned over to someone else, then you should probably duplicate them so you know they're done. Um, I haven't told Anita that I want to take them over, so she hasn't refused that, so I want to make that clear that that hasn't happened, but she, her and I have had the conversation that this is a problem and that I can't spend hours. I was on the phone with the IRS for two hours the other day. Um, so there is potentially, in the audit, there will be a finding about this, um, and there's potentially another $3,500 we're going to owe them if we can't straighten out 2011 stuff. Um, the warrant, I don't think the bills were done tonight, but... Um, there is a payment in there for the IRS for the 600 and whatever because we paid it late. We can't really fight it. <laughs> so that's in there. So some of the stuff has been cleared up since I've been down there, but some of it's going to take some time to clear up. We have a deadline of November 3rd for one of the things to either be cleared up or I have to at least call them again and talk to them to make sure they know we're still working on it. Um, it's a serious problem. The payroll stuff is a serious. The the so um, I'll keep work. I'm just letting you guys know. I'll keep working on it with her. But um, I made it pretty clear with her the other day that I can't. I'm just gonna have to do it. <laughs> I can't mm -hmm. keep doing this. Um, Be less time in the long run. It's much less time in the long run. And did she? Did you get a sense of? Her response to that? No, she knows that there's stuff that's outstanding. You know, I think there's a, um, I think part of it is there's a sense she's not sure how to do it. You know, and I made it clear that if she needs any help with anything, there's Just ask. a bunch yeah. of us willing to help her. So, yeah. um, so, you know, I was advised by the league to make sure that I let you guys know and that it's recorded and that it's an open session. And, and do we do we need to give you any sort of authority to do that? I or? don't think so right now. I mean, I think that we... No, I mean, somebody's mm -hmm. got to do it, so I'm right. just going to do it. Thankfully, I know how to do it. Right. Because the, you know, if I didn't know how to do it, we would have to hire somebody, somebody at this to point it. to do right. it. And, you know, at the rate mm -hmm. you guys used to pay Nimric, right. the amount of time I put into it would have cost the town about $1,000. Yeah, you know, so thankfully, 
you know, I have that, it's not foreign to me at all to do the payroll reporting, so, um, if I sign the 941s, that gives me the ability to, um, it gives me the ability to talk to the IRS about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So well, you already had permission. I do, sign. but only up yeah. until 2015, and as I was saying it, that was one of the oh. things I should have brought here as another power of attorney, right. which I'll do that for oh, the next that's meeting. that's what we talked about, yeah. Yeah, because I knew we talked about So um, I will make sure that at the next meeting I bring that and have it updated. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, do you want us to vote to authorize you to have power of attorney even if we don't have a piece of paper in front of us? Well, or? I have to, you have to sign it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, why don't you? Mm -hmm. We can come um, in and sign it even. What's that? We can even come in and sign it. Yeah. Yeah, we'll yeah why don't you do that? Um, no, so basically, it's. Yeah. So the power of attorney is going to be for payroll. You want to state it as a motion and then somebody can. So move the it. payroll. Um, all tax forms, and then 2016, and they said to put, because you can't really request to say like a blanket statement of just for 2016, 2017, because I already have it up to 2015, and that, um, From that point, it should be okay because I'm going to be signing them. So once I start signing them, then, it, then that gives me the ability right. to um, talk to them. So power of attorney, it's this is what so it's so we would, authorize, would entertain a motion to authorize Cynthia to have power, to of, have attorney. power of attorney and declaration of representation. For payroll, all tax forms, 2016, 2017. Payroll. Yeah, the IRS helped me fill this out. So they said put payroll, gotcha. what the forms were, and then the... For tax years, 2016, 17. Yeah. So this is the one that was, or this is the one that was already good right. through 2015. All right, so, so you want me to, so moved uh, that, uh, to grant Cynthia Stoddard a power of attorney and declaration of represent, representation uh, for the tax years 2016 and 2017, uh, all matters uh, within payroll. Yep. Mm -hmm. And outstanding tax forms. And all tax forms. And yeah. All, and all tax forms. Yeah. They're all under here, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. Second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize power of attorney to Cynthia Stoddard for the purposes mentioned. Unless there's any further discussion. All in favor? Uh, right. Yeah, and then if you can just come in and yeah. sign it. I you just yeah. need the chairman to sign it. Yeah. And then I'll fax that to them. The other thing I'll add on there is that they can send copies and notices and communication to me as well. That way I'll get a copy of it. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where we're at. I mean she I did talk to her and we'll see what happens in the next couple weeks, but I'll keep on it. We'll have another discussion about it because the auditor will have it as a finding. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's good for me. Yeah. I Unless mean, you I guys just, have something I, I just sort of you know, feel obligated to once again say that, you know, this further clarifies the fact that the office of the treasurer is not completing duties fully as expected and that that's an issue that we recognize and uh, don't have beyond this don't have the authority to make changes in that office but mm -hmm. would hope that those changes will occur um all right that brings us to town manager's report 
So really, this is just some date reminders. Um, the next select board meeting, which is October 26th, I have the date right. Mm -hmm. um, some representatives from the state will be here to walk through the village um, at, at 4.30. Okay. So if anybody wants to join us, it's at 4.30. And then they'll, they will come to the select board meeting and do a presentation on what village center designation means to a town as far as what you know benefits people can. These are state folks? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's on the 26th. The Public Safety Committee met last Monday, was it? And we yeah. decided that we would have the next public meeting regarding the discussion of policing on November 10th at 6.30 at the fire station. So I'm starting to advertise that through, mm -hmm. um, well, I did an email. I sent it out in an email, I think. I'll put it on Facebook. We'll put it on iPutney, and I'll see if the papers will... Um, advertise it I don't know if there's anything you want to I mean basically the meeting will be a, an update of where we're at in the discussion if what things have changed with which some mm -hmm. options have changed for us um, what the committee has um, I don't want to say come up with for a recommendation but just a general definition of what we think community policing looks like for Putney and then the question of, you know, is there a way to tackle that? Sure. Well, and I think really yeah. soliciting town people, townsfolk yeah. thoughts. To participate. Yeah. To really yeah. participate in this. Um, I think one of the questions we really want answered there is, are people ready to discuss a municipal police department? Or is that something we put on hold for you know, have a have not something presented at town meeting, but have it be a discussion at town yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think that's the not recommendation. Not to include it in the budget. Not to include it in the budget, but I think the recommendation by the board prepare is prepare yeah. for this, the following yeah. year. Um, and then I think part of it was identifying, you know, stakeholders in town of who could help us with the community part of community policing. Right. You know, the, the people that live Business here. That, yeah. Sure. yeah. So. Um, and do we have, I, I haven't been hearing anything about public safety issues as mm -hmm. far as in particular burglaries. I haven't either. I, or none that, I haven't heard anything. None that I'm aware either. of, okay. so. I know there was at least one arrest made yeah. somehow related to that and whether that was key to it stopping or whether whoever was doing it just moved, moved on, on or what yeah. it was. I haven't heard yeah. much even in surrounding I towns. haven't either. I no. haven't, it hasn't been. Um, and then um, Hickory Ridge Road, the road is still closed. <laughs> Still waiting for the culvert? No, the yeah. culvert was it was supposed to be done today. Um, we found out that the crane was going to be too close to power, so they have to shut power off. Green Mountain Power won't shut it off unless they give people two weeks notice. Yeah. Mm. So that puts us to the 27th or 28th that it will be put in. Um, I know that Brian had a meeting with Green Mountain Power today to see if there was a possibility of some other way, of doing, way of doing it. Because, I mean, I haven't really had people that live in that area say anything to me. It's more about getting the guys back on a schedule. I mean, Brian is, this Just needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. So as... No, the other thing that I think uh, I haven't heard a lot about, but... Mm -hmm. The people for whom the detour goes past yeah. their house. It's I'm sure a, it's getting it's, old. It's tired. Right? Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's uh, getting old, and and you know, I, I people, I haven't had anybody. I've had one person call and ask me what I thought. You know, the so there hasn't been major complaints, but I agree, it's tiring, and and I think the person that's most frustrated is, is Brian. He's yeah. extremely frustrated. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, I, you know, it, it is surprising that uh, that it worked out this way. I mean, 
uh, you know, an organization that does as much of this as they do, yeah. i.e. A.S. Clark, yeah, it's um, a little bit. you would think would have yeah. known those details in advance. And, and I do have to say them, this but... big of a project is probably the first one Brian and I have done together, I think, probably, and we've learned a lot from this project. Yeah. Um, so that goes to the next um, topic, which is Holland Hill which the project itself is not going to be as big, but there's, we're going to have to build a road at that right. point. Right, because there's, no, there's alternative, no alternative. There's no alternative. Yeah. So we have decided that we are not going out to bid. We have two years to complete the project. I think we're going to give a year off of a major project and really make sure that when we put this out to bid, we don't want to do an engineer and a contract bid. We want to do a design build bid. Right. So everything is done so all together. So responsible for all Yeah. That. So, um... No, and, you know, I mean, as much as we can do that, you know, as per the discussion we had about this, and I know Hollandale and Route 5 are not comparable, yeah. but, you know, basically fast-tracking it for exactly that reason. Yeah. Um, you know, whatever we can do. Yeah. And there presumably will have to be a temporary. Yeah, I mean, it's just like anything. When you do something for the Where first exactly time. Where is that culprit going to be? On Holland Hill? Yeah. I'd have to look coming at it. Out of, coming out of the beaver ponds. It's the, right by far away, I thought. It, isn't it? Is it I, that, I or is it remember. the other? Next one the, uh, up. No, or the just, next one down is uh, the end of uh, Overhills. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I thought it was the one by the. Like Craigans? I have to look in the picture because I'm not really familiar with it. Okay. So. But I can, I'll look at it when we're, but um, I think, you know, I never anticipated that the culvert wouldn't be yeah. built in time. <laughs> I mean, we ordered it way back in, I don't know, and, I, I and they wonder before whether, a September installation, right. so. I wonder where that glitch occurred. I don't know, and that's one of the things, once this is over, there's going to be a conversation with me, right. Brian, and um, Archie to say, okay, where and did, so so where did, this, where did yeah. this, you know, because we had some permitting issues too. Right. And that fell on, um, that really fell on the state. The permit, they were sent to the state and they sat on somebody's desk for a long time. Yeah. Um, and then in the meantime, the our river guy was replaced by somebody else. So then that guy had to pick up right. the permit. So there was a lot of little... So those are the things that we will make sure <laughs> that when the next permit or when the next project happens, that's why I said to Brian, I said, I think we need to just... We've gotten a lot of money Regroup. Yeah. in the last few years. It's not like these things are, you know, these are major projects that chances are we're probably not going to get another 175000 for a while. So there's nothing wrong with let's regroup, take the summer off, let's really get it um, yeah. done right. So it'll be great when it's done. It's just yeah. Uh, no, unfortunately, because there is a good detour and you know yeah. the weather hasn't been bad, et cetera, et, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It hasn't been so that maybe big deal, I mean but. I haven't talked to Brian since he went up there with Green Mountain Power today. Maybe there's something that came about that, and if it is, then they'll do it as right. soon as as right. soon as they can get it there. So, um, the financial statements, I was going to print you the final copy, but I found a mistake yesterday when I was looking through it. And so John, as I was coming here, I noticed that he had emailed me a new copy. Um, so I'll get those for the next one. I may have him, I may wait until the first meeting, maybe in November and have him down at the same time. Um, and then in here, there's a budget calendar. Nothing to go over, just for you to have and think about and get geared up for. Um, it's the same calendar we use every year. And I think last year, if we didn't need to have a meeting every week, we kind of... We didn't, yeah. Yeah, but we'll, we'll um, shoot for that at first. And if we don't need them, we'll have them. I would go check to see if warrants are in there. I looked earlier and I couldn't find them. The other thing that's on here that we yeah. have the we have the state forester coming to He's look. He's coming November 9th at one o'clock. Oh. So he asked if um, select board members could come. Yeah, no, and I, I told him that one could come. 
at least. Oh, well, we could warn it if we, we could if warn it. Sense. It's just I, I think if we warn it, we might get, which is fine. I don't want to think. I don't want people to think I don't want. Yeah, what are you saying, Cynthia? That you <laughs> don't I don't want, want people crowd. to think I don't want a crowd there. But he, I think both of us don't. We, we're very focused. He has like two hours worth of time. Right. Mm -hmm. And he was like, "I will come. I got like two hours, and we need to be stay on task." So we could if if. Three of you want to come, if two of you will warn it, and if people, we'll just have to make sure people understand that, that right. we're not up yeah. there for no, their I specific. No, I think that's fine. And if there okay. are, you know, we could even, well, I don't know. I mean, it's a lot of walking, so I'm guessing it might not be up your alley. Right. Um, Sorry. But, um, you know, if we both wanted to go for whatever reason. Okay. I didn't know um, if you could or, because of your schedule, but. I'm not sure I can either because of my schedule. Okay. But, uh, but I'm, it's a when. Wednesday. Yeah, it's a Wednesday. Yeah. Um, well, you guys let me know. We'll and figure if, it out. Yeah. Well, and you can let me know at the next meeting. Right. But we could even, you know, we could even warn it, and and then, you know, yeah. once he's left, have a little question and answer period. Yeah, I think that matter. there will there will be a couple students from Landmark there, and the teacher that has been going in, they've been up doing some. Um, inventory of what's up there. Oh, so I think they've even done some tree. So Ann asked if a couple of them could come in the teacher. So I told them, you know, I would coordinate that. But um, is that Bill Gunther? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay. And I don't think there's anything else that I have. He's a fast mover. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. yeah. When he gets going, he gets going. All right, let me go check to see if there's more. I don't think there was in that box. Yeah, let me know. I actually might be able to make this. Um, I can't remember. I know I have a meeting sometime in that week up north, but I'm not sure what day it is. So I can't remember. BSA tomorrow. BCA. Okay. B BC. Post house. Same thing, right? I don't think this this doesn't this top one isn't done yet. But there are a couple of Yeah, why did we get all these copies of this? This is just to I don't know, I need to put them out there. Remind you? Yes. I don't know. Remind Steve because he forgets all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, 13th and well, 20th. Two different days. Right? Yeah. Also, tomorrow I'm going to Montpelier with Wyndham and Windsor Housing Trust. Tomorrow is their meeting with ECDP. So I'm going as the town representative.
but who's got card magnets? Mm -hmm. Card magnets. Do we have to put them on the town, town manager? I didn't notice that. I don't know. It's only twenty two dollars. That can't be very nice car magnets. No. I don't know what that is.